Hi guys, so in this video what we're going to look at is the step sequencer. So the step sequencer on the Syntact is exactly the same as the Digitact, um, the Digitone, uh, and I'm sure with other devices as well, they, they work on the same principle. So what we're going to do, how to access this, how to play, how to use the page function, how to use the step sequencer, how to create um, parameter locks as well. I might do that in this video or I might leave it out for a separate video. Um, so, yeah, let's get cracking. So first up, how we access the step sequencer is we select a track. So as we know now, if you've watched the previous videos on the digital machines, the analog machines and the analog symbols, and what we have is trigger keys. So these things here, these are called the trigger keys. So key one to eight, they digital machines, and then keys nine to 12 are your analog machines with key 12 being dedicated to symbols. And these ones that here are numbered 13, 14, 15 and 16 are your trig modifiers. We'll look at these um, in this video. So basically what they are is these are trig modifiers where you can assign different parameters to it. These two are already set. So this one, number 13, is re-trigger. So these are all set to a grid sequence which repeats or re-triggers re the note of the active track. Again, with the velocity, to get to this we hold function and then number 14. And then over here um, for mod A and mod B, to select this we hold function and then press the number. And if we want to select a parameter for this, we hold down that and then press the up button. So what you have here is you have 13, 14, 15, and 16. They are assigned to these parameters here, which is E, F, G, and H. Um, you've also got a trig, a trigger on and off, and then you can select the destination. So if I wanted mod A to affect the frequency, I could set the frequency to different values. So I could have it open, and then I could have it to closed and then and then that would assign that when I press one of these buttons that would assign the filter to them to that 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 or that value of whatever these have been programmed to so moving on to the step sequencer we have a total of 12 machines available four analog eight digital one symbol. So with that, I've just selected a kick, an analog kick, a clap, vintage clap, and a hi-hat. So what I'm trying to do is just just something like that, something simple. So I sort of know my tempo that I want to play at. It's sort of that tempo. So how we input that into the syntax is we hold this function button down and then we tap our tempo. So to select our tempo, we what we have to do is hold function and then tap that tempo in. A new tempo will be activated after four taps. So after we tap that four times, that's when the new tempo will come in. I've got it at 100 beats per minute at the moment, so I think it's round about that. So let's just tap that in. Let's just play this again. It's roughly that. So 98, so let's go 99. So to access the tempo page, let's just press the tempo button. To increase the BPM by whole numbers, which is by 1.0 numbers, 
we encode this, we move this either right or left. Let's move that up to 99. To do that in 0.1 increments, we use the up and down arrows. So I will just press that twice. And now we're at 100 BPM. To exit that menu, we just press the tap tempo again. And now we are at, we are set at what tempo we think we're going to want to be in. So with that, what I need is I need something to play to. Uh, I could do it freely, but then I wouldn't be in sync with what the sequencer is. So what we use is a metronome. This counts the beats of the bar. It gives, just gives us a reference to put our inputs in. So we can either, there's two ways of doing this. We can either turn it on and off by pressing function and then metronome. This turns the metronome on and off, or we can hold it down to configure. Now we can go on, we can select different time signatures here. I'm just going to keep it on 4-4. Um, you can have a counting by how many bars, so up to 16 bars. I think I'm just going to have it on one and then the volume of the metronome. And then also you can turn it on and off here as well. So let's just see how that sounds. So that sounds fine for me. What I'll do is I will exit that by pressing the no button. And then now what we have is we have an active metronome and we are ready to record, record something into the step sequencer. So let's start recording something into the step sequencer. We know we have a kick, a hat and this clap. So let's try and, and put something in there. First of all, I want to have 32 steps. I know this is going to require not just one, one step of 16, it's going to require a minimum of two. So to increase that, what we have here is we have pages. So each page is 16 steps. So in total, we can have 64 steps because 16 steps per page. So to access this page, we hold function and then press the page button. To add another 16 steps, we press this button again and as you can see on the screen, the length has gone up to 32, 32. We can increase that more by going to 48 or by 64 and then back to 16. Or alternatively, if we didn't want 32 and we wanted something unsyncopated, we could have maybe 24 steps or whatever number you choose or you, you want. So to exit that, all we do is press no, that comes out. We now have 16 steps on each page, which totals are 32 steps. So when we play through, it plays that, and then it goes onto the next page, as you can see it flashing. So let's record something in. What I wanna do is I want to leave this quantized. So initially what I'm gonna do is just hold the record button, press play, and as you can see at the top of the screen, it says live recording quantized. What that means is when I play it in, it's gonna quantize it to the grid. So let's record something in now and let's just get something down. And that is just a simple beat and how we can record within Syntax. If we wanted to use some percussive sound, something that is unsyncopated, because a kick, a snare, and a hat, I wanted that to be tight. I wanted that to be on the grid. There is ways we can add swing just to make it a bit looser. So with my kick, my snare, and my hi hat, I wanted that to be to be quite tight. I wanted that to be synced to the grid. There are other sounds that you do want not to be synced exactly to the grid. You want to just play them in freehand, like percussive sounds. And, and you can do that. So you do that by just holding copy and then play and making sure that it is unquantized. So let's have a look at other sounds that we can add to this. Let's try this one. Let's try and go to PC Carbon. Quick sound design on this.
So next up, what I want to do is add a, a percussion sound in there. So we can get to a percussion sound one of two ways. So I can either press a track or I can hold track, the track button, and then press the track. So what that does is it just it doesn't play the sound. So you can go between any of these machines without playing the sound. Whereas when we're doing that, it plays the sound of the machine. So we've got a percussion sound, but I want to do something that is unsyncopated and I don't want it to match my current grid. So what I'm gonna do is hold function and page. And on this page, you will see um, the ability to use this pattern mode per track. So to access this is we hold function and yes. And what this does is this separates this pattern mode from all the other tracks. So this is per track. So if I didn't want 32 steps on this percussion sound and I only wanted, let's say 10, what I would do is go back to page one to 16 and remove that down to 10. So as you can see on this now, I only have 10 lights lit up. So that means it's only going to play 10 steps and then it's going to go back to the beginning and play 10 steps again. So let's just enter um, something like that maybe. So what you can see what's happening there is when our 32 steps have been completed, what this does is it re-triggers this back to the beginning. See it there, it moved up to number two and then it went back. It, so that means it's all in sync for when the global pattern starts. So what I want to do is add some swing to our drum loop. So we do this by going onto the tempo button and then it's the parameter E which lets us set the amount of swing that we desire. So what I'll do is we'll play it and then we will uh, add some swing in. So that is the way we can add swing to our pattern. So what I'm wanting to do is basically add the reverb to all the tracks, including the kick, just to give it a room. So we do that by holding track down. As you can see on the left hand side, the track four, which is here, that has now lit up. That means that all these tracks are selected. So whatever parameter I change, it's doing that on all these tracks. So let's just play it, hold the track button down, and then increase the reverb send. The kick is a bit too strong, so let's go over to the kick sound, and then we can just reduce that a bit down. Now it's got that three dimensional sort of room feel. Sounding really nice. First of all, what I want to do, instead of playing the root note, which is on the trigger page, which is C5, I want to select and I want to play notes in via a keyboard. We do that by pressing function and then keyboard. Now the chromatic keyboard is on. So this means it goes from C, or as root note, all the way up, up the scale. So C, C, as in this case, because that is what my note is. And also if I press a function and keyboard down, this brings us up to a different menu altogether. So on this menu, what you can do is select different scales. And as you can see on the chromatic keyboard, these are the notes within that scale.
and then you can select which root note you want to start on. So let's say G5. So it starts at G instead of C. But let's just keep it simple and let us go back to chromatic mode. One last thing to mention whilst I'm in this keyboard menu is the keyboard fold. So what this is, is if I'm in, let's say, um, a Dorian scale, I can hold, I can put on the keyboard fold. And what this does is it gives us these selected notes in a scale. So this is the scale, but this will be the octave above. We can go down an octave by pressing octave down button or, or go up an octave by pressing the octave up button. And that is keyboard fold. So just a quick sound design. Don't want that reverb on. With a bit of sound design, what we can do then is record that in. What I wanted to do for this one is go the full 64 steps. So we hold down function again, we press page, and this is per pattern on this occasion. So what I will do is just press the 64 steps and then come out of that. And then once we go onto different pages, we will notice that only the steps, only the tracks that we've changed the step sequence length to will be changing these buttons here. So one thing that we need to do whilst we're on the sequence page is we need to increase the length up to 64. That is on this pattern page. That way it will go all the way through. So what I'm going to do is let it play through once and then I'm going to start putting in my bass line. And that is how we play a bass line in. What I want to do on this now is I would like to use an LFO to open and close the filter. So we go to the LFO page. We then click on the frequency to select it. And then we dial in the amount. What I wanted to do though is be on trigger mode. So every time a note is played or a trigger is played, this is when it starts. 
sound nice with that is if we had another LFO controlling this parameter. So if we go over to our LFO2 page and we want to control LF, LFO1's depth, which is this button, and then we can assign that to a different waveform and we can have that run freely or we can have that on hold mode or whatever. Let's just see how it sounds. <laughs> Perfect. Loving that so far. I think it needs next is the kick and the bass. They are getting in the way of each other. So there is a side function uh, feature within this, which is which is which is excellent. Um, we can use that to duck the bass from this from the kick. So to access this, we look at the FX page. So if we hold function and then effects, we will see which tracks are rooted into the FX block. So right now I have the kick, the clap, and the hi-hat. They're all rooted into that FX block. I don't want them going in. All I want is the bass going in for now. And then we come out of that menu and we obviously click on the FX block. Now these are the parameters what we have to choose from. So what we want to do is head over to the amp page. And if we go onto page two, we have different modes. So all we want to do is we want a side chain. So if we have attack, hold and decay, but in a negative way, what that's gonna do is it's going to duck when it's been triggered. So if we go back to our kick page, if I go onto this, we can see that we have a kick on the first and the 17th step. So to copy these, we hold function and then copy. We head back over to our amp page. We are also selected on the amp page because this is where we enter our triggers for this to work. So to do that, all we do now, we want to copy our kick onto the FX sequencer page. So we hold the function and then we paste, and then that way our kick, our kick steps are pasted within this FX blocks triggers. So now what you'll hear is when it triggers, the bass will duck. That's how we use side chaining within the syntax. So we've covered quite a lot already. So the last thing I think I want to cover in this um, this video are these trigger modifiers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select trigger number, oops, trigger thirteen to repeat. But I want it on a symbol. I want like a shaker. So if I go over to this one and I go on C alloy. So I've shaped the C Y alloy into something that I think is, is suitable. So it's nice and shaky type. So what I want to do, we can either play this in manually. We can either put steps in for it to sound how we want it to sound, or we can play it by these trigger modifiers. 
So what I'm going to concentrate on is this re-trigger number 13. And what that does is it re-triggers it to a set tempo. To access the different tempos, all we do is hold the function 13 and then press up. And we can set different tempos to these buttons down here. So we can go from 1-1 one, one to 180. So So I'm going to leave it like that. So the one thing that these trigger parameters don't do is have the global swing type onto, onto these parameters. Um, I'm not sure if you can do it or you can't do it, um, but I hope they do add that in the future. Um, but when we play that into the sequencer, I think it will apply it then. So to exit this menu, all we'll do is press no. These are now set to our syncopated tempos. And then let's just have a double. So one thing I don't like is that number 10. I think we should have it on eight. 16, 24, and then let's go back to 32. So I'm going to let this play through once, and then I will start adding these notes into our step sequencer. So with that, my timing were a bit off. So what we do to, to sort this out is we select the track, we go over to the copy page onto the step sequencer. And what we want to do then is hold function and then quantize. And then what we can do is we can either quantize it globally or we can do it per track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna send it all the way up to track number five, on track number five, all the way up to one, two, seven. <laughs> So on page three, this or uh, page two, so on the last step of this sequencer or 32 on the 30 second step I want this to play on step one of the new bar so if I hold this down and I copy so I've copied the trigger I can then now delete that trigger go over to the next page hold this number one step down and then paste that trigger into place and let's all see how that sounds <laughs> And that sounds good. So what we want to do with this, again, let's just add panning. So we'll go to his LFO page, pan it. So 
So let's just add in one more sound and I want to just do this unquantized. So this is going to be nice, short and sweet. And this is using the micro timing. So let's just, just get cracking. It's on unquantized mode and it's over 32 steps. So what I want to show you on this is how we can adjust the steps to either go forward in time or back in time. So how we do this is we go into our step sequence page and then as we notice, these are the notes that we've played in. If, for example, we want to shift this one, all we do is hold this button down and then this brings up a micro timing. So what this means is that I'm 164th above the syncopated grid. So we can bring that back a bit or move it forward a bit, depending on what the feel is. And that's how we can use micro timing within the step sequencer. So what we can do also is we can re-trigger these um, steps. So what this does is it can re-trigger so many times. So how we do this is we hold this button down, we press the up or down arrow. So the up is to turn it on, or we can use these encoders at the top. We can hold, we can have the rate, and we can have the length. And then we can also have the velocity. So for example, if we wanted this, let's just say it carries on. And that's going to be in 16th notes. So what this is going to do is basically re-trigger that every 16th note until a new trigger happens. That way you can the bit it's basically like um these trigger modifiers but you're programming it in to do it to what you want it to do so just to summarize on what we've learned in the syntax on this video we've learned how to tap tempo we've learned how to put us on tempo in we've learned how to record in quantized we've learned how to record in unquantized We've also learned how to use the steps so you can show by putting notes in ourselves. We've learned how to use micro timing. We've learned how to use re-trigger mode. We've learned how to use trigger modifiers. We've learned how to use side chaining, use the effects block, um, using the metronome, using the filter, LFO, amp envelope, and how to assign them to different parameters. There's been quite a lot covered in this video. Um, so I have, like on all my videos, I have segregated them into small little chapters. So it's easy for you to just click on it if you need to go back to it or just watch something again. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, again, another video, will, I'll just keep bringing these videos out more and more and more. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.